Good afternoon and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. And this is a really fast bulletin involving Elon time, or rather the latest version of it. About a month ago, Elon told his followers that we were going to be looking at about a one to two month time frame before Starship would be ready to fly again. Just about everybody concluded that this was a gross exaggeration, and lo and behold, this is indeed the case, although I wouldn't necessarily call it a gross exaggeration given the latest update that we've received on Twitter. Elon has recently said now that we are going to be looking at another two months before Starship can fly again. That is to say, about a month in order to prep the pad, and then another month before Starship will be ready to fly after a series of testing. So perhaps sometime in early August we might see Starship flying, if indeed this timetable can be adhered to. Now, I have every confidence that if SpaceX didn't face any obstructions, that they could indeed get everything ready in two months in order to launch Starship again. That they would be able to install the water-cooled plate and then conduct a number of static fires, etc., before finally launching. However, there are a number of other things besides SpaceX's considerations that have to be taken into account, most significant of which is this ongoing launch lawsuit. Now, the lawsuit between these environmental organizations and now SpaceX and the FAA do not involve any sort of obstruction to future launches. There's no injunction in this lawsuit saying that SpaceX can't launch anytime they want to, that they can go ahead and take off from Boca Chica again. There's nothing saying that they, nothing preventing them rather from doing this. However, that being the case, the FAA may indeed issue some sort of injunction or just simply not issue a launch license until they get a better idea of where they're going to be standing with this lawsuit. They're not even supposed to be entering a plea until July 1st or perhaps sometime in late June, so they're going to have to take a little bit of time to get their house in order and determine exactly how they're going to be defending themselves. And then also we're going to have to see what kind of differences exist between SpaceX's priorities and the FAA's priorities because their objectives are not one and the same. The FAA cannot afford to lose this lawsuit. If they were to lose this lawsuit, it creates a precedent whereby the FAA no longer has complete jurisdiction over space launches in the future, that they may not have conducted their policies properly. The PEA that they issued was not sufficient in order to protect the environment of the surrounding areas that are under government protection and don't belong to SpaceX. If they were to lose this lawsuit, it would have a significant impact on their ability to manage other launches in the future. Obviously, the FAA doesn't want this to happen. Now, there is a school of thought that says that if they prevent SpaceX from launching, all that does is demonstrate that they may indeed be guilty, that it's in their interest to allow SpaceX to just go again with the assumption that the initial study that they did, the PEA that they released, was indeed sufficient, that they don't really need to make any sorts of significant changes, and they didn't essentially do anything wrong prior to April 20th. However, if they were to do this and something else went wrong, then it would be very serious indeed in regards to this lawsuit. On top of that, it is also very possible that the judge adjudicating this particular case might decide to issue his own injunction preventing SpaceX from launching. He may decide that this entire situation has a great deal to do as to whether or not SpaceX gets to launch again, and also are they going to do more damage or is there a risk of them doing more damage or putting the public in a state of jeopardy before the case has an opportunity to examine all of the facts? Therefore, he may decide that he doesn't want SpaceX jumping the gun on him and he might issue his own injunction. What I'm saying is there's lots of complications here. Here's the best way for SpaceX to resolve them, in my opinion. 
First of all, obviously, get the pad ready. Put everything into place to the best of their ability. Once again, I'm not sure if this water-cooled metal plate was designed to withstand the kind of damage and the kind of power that they saw on April 20th. I think they may have underestimated the amount of power that Starship can actually put out and the kind of damage it can do to a surrounding facility. They may not have designed it for this particular scenario. So they may have to make some modifications. At the very least, SpaceX should then carry out an extensive static fire campaign that includes all 33 engines dialed up to at least 90% for several seconds to see what it does to their pad and to their water-cooled plate. Keep in mind that the FAA has very little authority over all of this. And that SpaceX has the right to carry out whatever ground tests that they want want to in order to ensure the safety of the rocket. So that being the case, they can carry out static fires. They can test their water cool plate to see just how resilient it is before the FAA issues any launch licenses. I think that would be a very good move on the part of SpaceX. And if they can demonstrate that even under full power, under full thrust of all 33 engines, that this metal plate is going to hold up just fine and then produce those findings produce their data to the court, I think that that will give them a very strong position indeed under which to launch by the beginning of August. So in my opinion, that's what they need to do. Also, for the sake of the well-being and the uh, ease of mind or the, uh, the comfort, shall we say, of the surrounding communities as well. Their considerations have to be taken into account too now, I think. SpaceX needs to try to be a good neighbor. Therefore, they should also demonstrate to the Boca Chica communities, to Port Isabel, South Padre Island, Brownsville, etc., that their rocket is safe now, that the water cool plate and other modifications that they've made to the ground systems are going to be sufficient to carry out a safe launch. If they can do all of those things as well, I think that that gives give SpaceX a very strong position to argue that they should be allowed to carry out a second launch as rapidly as possible. We shall see how things develop, but nevertheless, that's the latest version of Elon time that we've received. We'll see how things develop from here on out. I personally am a little skeptical in terms of whether or not things are going to be ready this quickly. I have a feeling that it might be sometime in September before Starship is really ready to launch, but nevertheless, I don't think it's too far in the future as long as the government doesn't stand in the way, and that's a very big if. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, also please check the description for various ways to support my content, and as always, stay angry about space.